years. Okay, so um, my name is Miss Markison. I am a third grade teacher in Dallas, Texas. I'm actually a math teacher. And so a lot of y'all are probably like, why is a math teacher doing an ELR lesson, an ELA lesson? Well, it's a good question. Um, it's because I believe strongly that everyone should be a reader. Um, in my math classroom, I have books all over. My kids are constantly reading. I'm incorporating reading into my classroom. And I say as a math teacher too, good mathematicians are good thinkers and good thinkers are good readers. So they all kind of blend together. And I also used to teach first and second grade and I loved a good read aloud then. So I'm really excited to kind of get back to those roots. Um, the second thing I wanted to share is that because I'm a math teacher, I obviously, I love problem solving. I love math. I love all of that. I love numbers. Reading has not always been my strong suit. It's been something I struggled with growing up. I never really had a love of reading. It was never easy for me. And even as a teacher, it, you know, I get nervous reading out loud. It's not comfortable for me. Um, but I want to let y'all know that that's okay. Everyone has different strengths. Everyone has different things they love and different things maybe they have to work on. And even as an adult and as a teacher, I have those things. I have my favorite things and I have other things. And reading something that's been a struggle for me, but yet I continue to push through and practice and have found a love of it as well. So if you're kind of like me and maybe it's not your comfort zone, that's okay that we can kind of push through and work on the things that we have a hard time with. So today we're gonna be reading a book. It is called Pockets Full of Colors. Is that still backwards for y'all? If it is, I'm sorry. But the pictures are still beautiful even if they're flipped, so it's okay. So it's called Pockets Full of Color. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about just yet. Before we get started, we are gonna look at a couple different, I'm gonna get that in there as much as I can a couple different um, sentences that we're gonna see in the book. The first one, it says, driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, and sienna. Now, this book is called Pocket Full of Colors, so obviously we're gonna be reading about colors some. These three words, russet, taupe, and sienna, are three colors that our book is gonna talk about. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, Russet, taupe, and sienna are not colors that are in my crayon box. It's not blue, it's not purple, it's not pink. It's not something I'm necessarily familiar with. I know that um, apples can be red. I don't know what russet, taupe, and sienna might look like. But I'm gonna read this sentence again. And I want us to look and see if there are any clue words that you might hear that make you think you know what color that would be. Now, some of you out there, I know the students in my class, I don't know about y'all, the students in my class love a good like extra fancy crayon box, the ones that have like 200 and every fancy color there ever was. So some of you may know, if you know, don't spoil it for us. If you don't know, we're gonna read it again and see if we can find some clue words. Okay, so the sentence again, it says, driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, and sienna. Okay, I want y'all to type in if you hear any words in there that give you clues or what those colors could be. Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, and sienna. Okay, now I have a second sentence. I'm not gonna tell you what the colors are yet. We're gonna keep going. It says, when she arrived in California, she found groves of golden fruit dripping from viridian trees. Now I underline the word viridian. Again, viridian's not a color that I usually say, hey, hand me that viridian crayon. So is there any word there that might help you figure out what viridian looks like or what it is? I'll read it one more time. When she arrived in California, she found groves of golden fruit dripping from viridian trees. Any words in there give you a hint for what viridian is? Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is there's two colors down here. Now these are in our book, but this time I wanna talk about the feeling that the colors may give you. What does it make you think of when you hear these colors or the way the author wrote it? So the author put rosy pink and blushing red. Now when we read the story, you'll kinda of see why they use those colors, but what does that make you think when you hear rosy pink and blushing red. Do y'all have any like pictures that come in your mind? I know the writing's gonna be backwards. It's, I'm on my phone because the computer won't work. So we're just gonna go with it. So if you can't see the writing, it's okay. I'm gonna read everything for you. So just use your imagination. <laughs> uh, okay, so again, it was rosy pink and blushing red. What does that make you think of when you hear rosy pink and blushing red? I see happy, warm, any like holidays maybe, or hmm, I think of flowers, so. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on our book. I love this book. Oh, and I wanna say, this book is a brand new book to me. I went to my friend, she's actually a librarian, and I said, I went through all my books, and I just want something different, and so I asked her for some suggestions, and she gave me this suggestion, and it's amazing. I fell in love right after I read it. So, 
your friends are a really good place to go if you don't have a good book, they can always give you new ideas. Ooh, Valentine's Day, warm, happy cheeks. Ooh, rosy cheeks, that's a really good one. Love Valentine's Day, cupcakes, yum, yes. Valentine's Day, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I didn't want to tell you, but that was my guess. It's kind of rosy pink and blushing red reminds me of love and Valentine's Day. Okay, we're gonna get started. Pockets full of colors, now. It is The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney artist extraordinaire. Do I have any Disney lovers out there? I'm a, for sure a Disney lover. I was hoping to go this summer, but I don't know if that's gonna happen anymore. Now, again, this is a pocket full of colors. So look at this, the illustrations are amazing. And I'm gonna try my best since I'm on my phone to kind of show you both pages. Under a wide blue sky on a red dirt road in a lemon yellow house, there lived a little girl named Mary. Other children collected marbles or dolls, but Mary, Mary collected colors of every shade and every hue. Now, how do you collect colors? I know I can like collect different kinds of dolls. I can put marbles in a box. How would one collect colors? It's kind of an odd thing to say. One day, Mary's parents announced they were moving out west. She waved good as she waved goodbye to the yellow house, Mary tucked her friend Lemon in her pocket. Now, do you think she picked up an actual lemon, guys, like a fruit and put the lemon fruit in there? Look at this illustration, that doesn't look like a lemon fruit, so I don't know, hmm, let's think on that. Mary would miss the happy home, but she had new colors to collect. Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, and sienna. Well, that was our sentence that we talked about before. Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, and sienna. Are y'all ready to see the picture? Is that what y'all pictured? Now, when I read it, the words that point out to me were sun, bleach, desert. I thought of the sun. What colors do you think of when you hear the sun? I think of reds and oranges. Maybe a sunset has some pinks and yellows. And then I heard sun bleached. And that bleach seems like very um, dry, dry colors. And then I heard the word desert. Now, what do you know about a desert? Can you all type in the comments what you know about deserts? I know, aren't these illustrations just beautiful? Tell me, what do you know about deserts? I know that in deserts, there's not water. Does anyone else know that? There's no water. And when you don't have water, what can you not have? You don't really have plants, right? So if there's no water, I, I don't think these colors would be blue. I don't think these colors would be green like plants. I'm thinking of a lot of hot, warm colors. So when I heard sun bleached desert, in my mind, I thought red, I thought orange, I thought yellow, pinks, those kind of maybe brown or sand color, dry. Yeah, all those are good ones. So look, were we right? Very good, I, that's kind of what I was picturing. Okay, now the second one. When she arrived in California, she glimpsed at the azure ocean and found groves of golden fruit dripping from viridian trees. Are y'all ready to see viridian trees? Is that what y'all guessed? Now, I heard trees, and what do we know about trees? Trees are usually green, right? And I don't know about you, but I know a very little bit of Spanish and I know the Spanish color for green is verde and it kind of sounded like Viridian. So in my mind, that was a little bit of like, hmm, maybe that could be it. I was using some different clues. Um, it was kind of a hypothesis. I might've been wrong, but I was making an educated guess, which is always good. In the city, she discovered steel gray buildings and mauve tinted skies. Oh, I love the color mauve. It's that pink color. Isn't that pretty? Mary opened her sketchbook. She mixed her paints. She would save these shades for just the right time. Look at that, guys. Saving all of those colors that she collected. Now, did she pick things up at every place? Where is she collecting these colors? In her sketchbook, but I'm kind of thinking there's another place she might be collecting them. Now, when she was older, Mary went to art school and she met Lee. He showed her rosy pink and blushing red, and she kept those colors in her heart. There's those words we talked, rosy pink and blushing red. We talked about how that might mean love or Valentine's Day or warmth or, or cupcakes. It's all very sweet things, right? Why would she use or the author use the words rosy pink and blushing red when she described Lee? Hmm. What do you think is happening with her and Lee? And it said that she kept this color in her heart. The other one she put in her in her notebook. 
she kept rosy pink and blushing red in her heart. Why would she save those colors special in her heart? I think she might be in love with Mr. Lee. Together, Mary and Lee painted rainbows, but it was the Great Depression and people were poor. No one was buying rainbows except for one place. Now I wanna stop us there. So this just talked about the Great Depression. This is a true story about a real person in a real time. The Great Depression was a long time ago, but that was a time where people in the United States were losing their jobs, they didn't have a whole lot of money, and they weren't spending their money frivolously. Can y'all say that word? Say frivolously. Say it again, frivolously. Now what does frivolously mean? If you're not spending your money frivolously, it means you're being very careful with your money. You're not wasting it. You're not just spending it here and there on all your ones that you ever have. When people didn't have jobs and have money, they had to be very careful with saving their money and only spending it on like needs. Now, let's go back. She's painting pictures of rainbows. Do we think a, a painting of a rainbow would be a want or a need? I'm definitely thinking it's a want, right? It's not something you need to have. So during that time, she said it was hard to be an artist because people were only spending their money on their needs and her paintings were not a need. But it said there was one place. What do you think that one place that may want her rainbows? Hmm. Mary landed a job at Walt Disney Studio, one of the first women to ever be hired. So that's pretty cool back then that a lot of women weren't taking jobs like these, even though they were very, very qualified. Finally, a place for her colors to run and dance and play as they pleased. Now, okay, so now I want you to think, has anyone ever been to Disney World or Disneyland? I went for the first time last summer and loved it. So if you have, think about what it looks like when you go to Disney World or Disneyland. If you haven't been to Disney World or Disneyland, I bet you have watched a Disney movie. What are some things you know about Disney movies or the theme parks, just Disney in general, the brand? What is it? What kind of feeling does it give you? What might you see? To me, don't they say it's like the happiest place on earth? <laughs> it's really happy. What would a happy place look like? I think it would look like a perfect place for Mary, right? Okay, so I want you to put that picture in your mind of what you think the Disney World that Mary's walking into would look like. Now, are you ready to see? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, is that what y'all pictured? Oh, yeah, tons of bright colors. I don't, I don't know about you, but that's not quite what I pictured with Disneyland. I, I remember castles, and that's not quite it, huh? But there's Mr. Walt Disney right there in the front. Do you see him? And even that rainbow doesn't look very bright which is kind of surprising for Disney. But on her first day of work, the men in charge didn't want to talk about Cerulean or Celadon or Cerise. They were only interested in black and white. Can y'all spot Mary in this picture? Does she stand out a little bit? Yeah, she's the only girl in there. She looks a little bit different than everybody else. Mary was told to follow the rules. She tried, but her colors were too vivid, too wild. When Mary turned in her work, her ideas were all rejected. What does rejected mean? They're saying, no, 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 we don't like him. Turn him away. Twinkling emerald skies? The men turned them blue. Magenta horses that could fly? The men made them brown and put them in a stable. Peach giraffes with tangerine spots? Her bosses just shook their heads. They didn't know what to make of her art. They're saying, no, 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 Mary. No way. Look at their faces. That doesn't look a very happy place to work. But Walt, the man who owned the company, he did. He loved her color so much, he asked Mary to join him on a trip to South America to meet some new ones. Oh, this is one of my favorite pages. Look at that. Now, look at all these colors. Now, they're not just coming from the plane. If you look really closely, where are they coming from? They're all coming from Mary. Mary delighted in the colors of Brazil and Argentina and Peru. She worked hard to capture the vibrant scenery. When it was time to go home, Mary's bags burst with fuchsia, teal, aquamarine, indigo, lime green, and banana yellow. Okay, I'm gonna hold these pictures up because they're beautiful. Look at these illustrations. All the colors, all the experiences that she's having there. Now in this sense, I'm gonna read it again. It says, when it was time to go home, Mary's bags burst with fuchsia, teal, aquamarine, indigo, lime green, and banana yellow. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I travel, my bags burst open for sure. 
if it bursts, what happens to your bag? Show me, do it right now with your hands. So here's my, my suitcase and it goes. <laughs> now it's not because I have too many colors in there. What do I have too much of? I for sure have too many clothes or maybe too many souvenirs. I bought too much stuff on my trip. So my bag is like, I'm having to push it close and zip it. And it's bursting at the seams. Now it said her bag is bursting with colors. Do you think a bag would burst open with colors? They don't really take up much space. So maybe, is it really her bag that's bursting? What could be bursting with colors? I'm thinking maybe it's this is bursting. Maybe it's her mind, her ideas. Have you ever had a wonderful idea or seen something and you're so inspired? Like I have to go do this right now. I have to go draw this. I have to go build this with my Legos. I have so many ideas. I wanna go write my story. Yeah, she's bursting. She's so excited. Oh, I love that picture. Now, after Mary returned to Disney, her concept art for the studio's upcoming films grew even more adventurous as she drew upon the eye-popping shades she'd observed in South America. Cinderella? Cinderella needed a teal pumpkin coach. And the caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland? Only could be aquamarine. And the mermaids in Peter Pan simply had to be lime green. Y'all, are those any characters that y'all recognize? Look, the... the um. The pumpkin coach from Cinderella. That's something I've seen before. I've seen Peter Pan. How cool. Some text of self-connections. I, I recognize that. In uh, this time, some of Mary's ideas were accepted, but most of her art was still considered too modern, too abstract, and just not right. Mary's colors encouraged her to leave the men with their black lines and strict rules. Now, look at this next picture. So she did. Do the colors there remind y'all of anything? They remind me of something on this one. To me, I think the illustrator kind of made them look like wings. Does anyone else think that? And to me, when I think of wings, I think of something flying away, maybe freedom. She's flying to freedom and finally free of everyone and their strict rules. So, and she's so happy. Mary quickly found new work designing advertisements and illustrations, illustrating picture books for children and creating sets for plays and television commercials. She enjoyed the freedom of these new jobs, but Mary missed Walt. So this is all the jobs that she took on when she could kind of do her own thing. But then one day, out of the blue, her phone rang and it was Walt. Mary, I have a project for you. I need your wild and beautiful colors. His voice boomed. Walt explained his idea to build a magical ride that would teach people about the cultures from around the world. A ride had to be full of color, which meant that there was only one person for the job. Mary, you know about colors that I've never even heard of before. Mary smiled. And then she frowned. What in the world? Mr. Walt Disney called her and offered her a job. Why is she frowning? Would you be frowning? I think that's a pretty great offer. What do you think Mary's thinking right now? If she's saying, oh my goodness, I miss Walt so much and he called me and he wants me to make this own ride all by myself and then she frowns. I wonder what's going through her head. Do you have any thoughts? What do you think she's thinking? And then she frowned as she remembered the rules and the lines and the men in charge who didn't understand her colors or her style of art. There was only one way to answer. Yes, said Mary, but her yes came with a condition. This time, Mary wanted to be the one in charge. Walt welcomed her aboard. Mary's paint seemed to sparkle when she hung up the phone. She had never been to places like China or Morocco or Kathmandu, but her colors had. Do you think her colors traveled? How have they been there? Hmm. Sitting down to work, she squeezed out dabs of paint. Lemon yellow, aquamarine, azure, mauve, taupe, and tangerine, russet, sienna, and steel gray, celadon, cerulean, cerise, and magenta, teal, indigo, and emerald shine from her palette. And when she picked up her brush, the colors Mary had so carefully collected all of her life took on a trip around the globe. Now, I'm gonna hold this one up close so y'all can really see. Look at all that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you've been to Disneyland or Disney World, do you know at this point 
what ride is she uh, possibly creating? You don't have any background knowledge? When the work was done and the ride open, the people gasped in awe. Now, can you gasp? Now, sometimes when I hear gasp, I'm like, oh! Now, is that gasping in awe? That's kind of a scared gasp. It's not like that. How are they gasping if they're gasping in awe? I'm kind of thinking back to my own life. When I gasp in awe, it's every time when it's Christmas lights. I love Christmas lights. And I have the college I went to, they have a big Christmas light ceremony and they flip the lights and they all come on. And when all those Christmas lights come on, Everyone there, we all go, oh, oh, and we just stare, and our mouths are open. We are amazed by it. That's kind of what I'm picturing when I hear everyone is gasping in awe. They're just amazed by her colors. So right now, show me your best gasp with awe. Like, oh, maybe your eyes are really big. Oh, my goodness, taking it all in. The people gasped in awe. It's a small world was a sensation. I see some of y'all said it's a small world. Y'all are right. It was a sensation. When it was Mary's turn to take the ride, she leaned back in the boat and let her colors wash over her. It was a world of laughter, a world of smiles, and a world of color, color, color everywhere. Where? This, at last, was Mary's world. So the ride that she designed was, it's a small world, which some of y'all may have seen before or gone on. Um, I don't have it in the comments right now, but when I'm done here, I'm gonna go and put back in the caption, I have a link where you can actually do a virtual tour of Is It Small World. So if you haven't been on it or haven't gone to Disney World, you can go to that link and it will drive you through the whole ride. And now it'll be more exciting. I wanna go rewatch it now because after hearing how Mary designed it, I kinda wanna take the ride through Mary's eyes. I think it'll have a whole new meaning. So that's the wonderful world of Miss Mary Blair. Now, a couple things. First of all, this illustrator was just amazing, right? Amazing. They really captured her style and her love of color. But there's a couple of things the illustrator did that I do wanna talk about. We talked about, or we stopped at this picture of Mr. Walt Disney at Disneyland. And we talked about, is that how you would picture Disneyland? It is not how I picture Disneyland. Now, there's still a rainbow and he still looks happy. Like it doesn't look like the worst place ever, but it's definitely not like as bright and colorful as I would have expected it to be. Now, this is how the illustrator depicted Disneyland. And let's look at the office. Okay, do you see that? Now, what do you notice the difference is in the pictures of the office at Disneyland? And then let's go, how about this one? Her trip to South America. I'm gonna kind of go back and forth. Office at Disneyland or Disney World. And then South America. Do you notice a difference? Do you feel differently about looking at those two pictures? I sure do. And now that I know, you know, when I first heard she got a job at Disney World, I was like, well, that's the most magical place on earth. But then kind of after we read some, we realized that the people that worked there at that time and in that year and era, she was the only woman. They, they liked things the exact way, the same way. They didn't want people to go kind of think outside the box, except for Mr. Disney. So it was a very strict place to work. So it wasn't the happiest place for everyone to work. So I think that's why maybe the author or the illustrator depicted Disney World like this. They were trying to give us some clues that mm, maybe it's not quite as magical right now as you think it might be. And the same thing when they went inside, you'll notice who is the only one wearing color. It's Miss Mary. She's definitely standing out from the first time she steps in there, right? Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about, oh, we only have much, we don't have much time. Oh man, okay, I'll be quick, I promise, but we got started a little late because I had phone issues, so we'll be quick. And y'all can't see down here, but I'm gonna read off. Here are some different quotes that were in the story that I wanna talk about. And the, the author talked about the colors. They said she collected colors, the colors run and dance, the colors took a trip to South America. She went, took the trip to meet her colors, do you ever meet colors? Her colors encouraged her. Her colors burst out of the bag. Now, all these things are things that I don't think colors actually do. What, what the author has done here is it's kind of personified colors. It's given it um, like it's its own character in the story. Now, the reason I think the colors are so important in this story, do you think it's really the colors? Is it the colors that were encouraging Mary? Is it the colors that were bursting? I'm kind of thinking maybe it was Mary's ideas and her mind, maybe it was her own inner confidence that she uses art to express that and she uses the colors to express those things. But I think it's kind of more inside Mary that her confidence and her ideas are encouraging her saying, hey, I know this isn't the best place for me. I need to go off. 
Um, and it said her colors had never been to China or Morocco or Kathmandu, which I know colors don't travel, but maybe in her mind and the stories she's read, the places she's been, she's kind of collected those memories in her mind. Um, okay, so a couple things. I'm also gonna put a link in the caption with some activities y'all can do. And I had a directed drawing that I can run y'all through really quickly. And then you can go back and rewatch it if I go too fast. But let me tell you the different activities. So we just said that she traveled everywhere in her memory. She collected the colors as she picked up different memories throughout her life. When she met the love of her life, when she moved. So the first thing you can do is you can color your memories. So there's three different options on this one. And it says, I collected the color blank when. So you can say, I collected the color purple when. And tell me a memory that you have that's associated with that color for you. Um, and here's our direct drawing that we're going to do. And that's kind of what I did. So I drew little Mary here. And then I said the different colors. So I collected the color mint green when I think about my, my grandfather's favorite ice cream when we used to eat it together. I collected the color pretty pink from my three nieces. When I see pretty pink and like bows, I think of my nieces and I love them. Um, I collected the color red from the tulips at my college, Texas Tech. Those are some memories I have of that color. So one option is you can talk about different colors and memories that you have. And so here's this one. And then I also have it, which is some writing pages or scan your lines if you want that. Okay, the next one is Mary. We talked about how these colors, how they're kind of more, the character that the author's trying to talk about is her ideas and her own inner confidence and all of the the big, vivid, bright ideas that she has. And so I think that you all have wonderful ideas too. I know we all do. And everyone is creative and can be creative. So I also have a little thing that says my big ideas. So this is somewhere where you can draw or write out four big ideas you have. And maybe they're big, crazy ideas that you don't even want to tell anyone because people are just like, you're crazy. But we know that that's how Mary felt. Everyone thought that she was crazy and she did it anyway. And she turned out to be an amazing artist. So Here's somewhere that you can sketch down, kind of keep close to you, some of your big ideas and think about what you can do to make these big ideas happen. And the last activity I have, um, think about someone who you look up to, who you really admire. And I know like I always admired my brother growing up. I just thought he did no wrong. His everything he did was amazing. Everyone loved him. And then as I've grown up, I kind of realized that no matter who our idols are, who our heroes are, everyone has struggles that they go through and everyone has weaknesses or uh, maybe a little shy or nervous about some things. Kind of when I started this video, I said, I'm nervous about reading. That's something that makes me feel uncomfortable. And I don't feel like it's something that I'm really good at. It's something I've had to work through. I'm good at math, but this is sometimes a struggle. So what you get to do is you can go to your hero, maybe your mom, your dad, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your teacher, and you can interview them. So in this interview, it says, tell me how did you color your vivid ideas? So there's three questions you can ask them and then you can write their answers that they do. So it says, tell me about a time when someone told you your ideas weren't good enough. And this might surprise you because you're gonna think, oh my goodness, my teacher, all her ideas are great, everyone loves her. But I bet there are some times in their life even they were told no and kind of shot down their confidence. So it says, tell me about a time when someone told you your ideas weren't good enough. And then the next one is, how did you overcome that setback? And then the third question is, what advice would you give someone to help them believe in their colorful ideas? So how can you help build that inner confidence too that we know Mary had, like when she walked out of Disney with her big colorful wings flying to freedom? So those are three activities you can do. I'm gonna quickly do a directed drawing, but if it goes way too fast, you can always go back, pause when this is replayed, and then you can do it on your own. Okay, so let's see if I can get it up close. So I'm drawing Mary, but you can draw it as yourself or you can draw it as a character Mary. So I'm putting my paper vertically up and down. The very first thing I'm gonna do is draw Mary's face. So I'm gonna draw a big, and I'm trying to fold my board so it's gonna be kind of a mess. A big U for her face. Then you're gonna do your hair. You could just go straight across, but I try to make some bangs. So I go across a little bit, up, down, across, up, down, and then across and closed off. Okay, now next to do the hair on the top. And again, if I'm going too fast, you can pause later. I'm gonna make a big M, like the letter M. So I start in the middle and I go scoop over out. Go to the other side, scoop over out. There we go. And I made her hair kind of sway one way. And then we're gonna close the bottom. I do the same thing. I go over, up, down, over, up, down. And then I go all the way to her chin. And then do that on the other side. Over, up, down, over, up, down. Now again, you don't have to do those little cuts. I just do it because it makes it look more like bangs. And then you can draw her hair lines, which are just kind of crazy lines wherever you want them to go. So there's Mary's hair. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is do her nose because the nose is the middle of your face. So it helps your symmetry doing that next. The nose, I kind of think of like a slide. You're gonna go down, scoop over and in. Now, if you don't like to do that kind of nose, you can just do a little triangle nose or sometimes do a little, like a little frowny face nose. You can do whatever nose you want. Um, Mary in the story when she was little, she had two really big eyes. So I'm gonna do two circle eyes, big circle, big circle. She had some little eyelashes on the side, so I'm doing three eyelashes on each side. And then inside her eyes, you're gonna draw another big circle. You color it in black. I'm not gonna do it very neat because we're running out of time. And then color it in black. Here we go. Now for her mouth, you do a little teeny tiny mouth and then a big U to scoop down and close her mouth out. Now I wouldn't do this with my marker, but you can do some little cheeks, which is like the color pink, kind of make some rosy cheeks, some blushing red cheeks as our author said in our story. Okay, to give her a neck, you're gonna go straight line down, straight line down, two perfect little lines, close it off. She had a collar on her shirt, and so a big W, W, and close it. Okay, then you can give her some sleeves on her arms. So the sleeves is like a big circle or a big oval and a big oval on the other side. It does not have to be perfect at all. Mine are kind of wonky, but that's okay. And then to make it fun, she had some like little frillies and I just make little like cloud scoops all the way across. Nothing fancy. And the last thing I did is I gave her a couple of buttons. So there is our Mary. Now the last thing I did on mine is I kind of did some swirly lines because if you saw in the pictures of the book, her colors kind of came like swirls out of her mind throughout the whole story. So I'm gonna come out to the middle of my head and I do a swirly line out. I go over a little bit, do another swirly line. Come to this side, do a swirly line. Maybe like right around where her cheek is, do a swirly line, the other cheek. And then I'm gonna go to her neck, swirly line down and on the other side. Now inside, these little boxes, you can color each one and you can write about your big ideas that you have, like Mary's ideas, or my other option that I said was you could write about some colors that you've collected with different memories of your life and how you hold on to them and they're special to you. So there are two options. Um, again, I'm gonna put all that in the caption. I'm gonna put the virtual tour for the It's a Small World ride and a bit.ly link for all those printables if you want them. I would love to see how you use them. Again, my name is Miss Corey Markerson, um, True Tales a Teacher on Instagram. If you wanna share them with me, I'd love to see it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so sorry for the technical issues at the beginning and that everything was backwards. But hopefully if we ever do this again, it'll be figured out. But y'all were troopers. Thank you so much. And you'll have a fabulous day.